I can't go to the store because I don't have a gun. And one time when I went to the store, I ran into my friend who is someone that probably, he's, he's pretty much my best friend. He, he's very Christian. And um, he, I'm pretty sure, defended this girl who, when she was 18, she used to hang out with us when we were in middle school. She was a senior in high school. We were in middle school. And uh, she would give us free cigarettes and drugs anytime if we just called her. Like, hey, come over, give me cigarettes. And uh, she worked at Taco Bell. And um, this guy defended her, and which makes me think he's a cop, even though he's like, he was pretty much my best friend. Um, so I can't go to that store because he knows that I go there. And if he knows I go there, then other people know I go there and I don't have a gun and everyone knows it. And they, they're the type of people that will shoot a hiker when they're just riding their bike on a trail or not a, not a hiker, a bike rider um, with a rifle. And then the murder never gets solved. Um, they're the type of people that will rig an 18 year old's car to go through your hood, go through your, have to have the hood go through the windshield. All right, so CSPD has no idea what's going on. They've never heard of me, but this girl, apparently they investigated her, but then she got defended by everyone who is an undercover cop, but she was the type of person that's like the most disgusting woman of all time. Um, and she would hold the kid's hands because she, um, they weren't kids, we were middle schoolers. Let's face it, we, I felt like an adult. And I had a very intimate relationship with her. Um, and, uh, I mean, they always wanted me to run away from home. So, um, they always thought my parents were evil. Her mom thought my, my mom was like the most evil person of all time, but my mom was like the director of National Day of Prayer. I just didn't like that my parents wouldn't let me do drugs and they would always deliver drugs to me. All right, so this cop, I'm pretty sure investigated that sort of stuff, has decided I'm crazy because all the undercover cops defend each other. They don't snitch on one another. They protect one another, even if they're rapists. So, apparently, like, I can't fucking take care of my disabled parents because, let's face it, my dad can't drive. Like, he can't do anything by himself because his brain. My mom is almost there. She doesn't do anything by herself. She always needs me. I can't do it. I ha she has to call an Uber because I can't carry a gun, because the last thing I'm ever gonna do is go to a scheduled appointment without a gun. I don't, I, even if it's unscheduled, I can't do it. I need shoes. I haven't had shoes for years. Can't do it. Well, probably not that long, probably like a year and a half. All I'm saying is, this whole attempting to assassinate me thing, um, I feel like at some point, you have to understand, you're getting kind of obvious about it. Like when you put your name on the piece of paper, but apparently this guy, like they, they pick him because he, he doesn't even know about the drugs at all. So like there are like these DEA guys in the, in the police department that pick certain detectives. Like he doesn't know about the drugs. We'll put him in charge. And then this per and then they, then they're, then like he's got a relationship with them and it's group think. Because trust me, the person that's charging you doesn't even know because you did threaten someone with a gun, even though like, okay, what is wrong with me? You're, you're a lone man who's crazy. Okay, you, you've you been going through my passwords, right? And you like can see that I do math that you can't understand and I've, I've never actually done math in college. That I, I do like that advanced in math. Like, do you realize like when I talk about the NSA showing up and like I, I give you multiple references and I tell you I have emails, which is like a paper trail, but then you take my gun away and like you know that it's a national security situation, but then you're like, well, no, trust me, the person I talked to at the NSA doesn't know that you exist. And then it's like, all right, yeah, your boss says that you don't, you're not very good at computers. All right, well, number one, that's, that's lying. But then it's like, well, it's not lying to a federal agent. That's lying to a local cop. You're allowed to lie to a local cop. And so everyone's sitting there going like, I'm really confused. Why don't we actually look at the emails to see if there's a paper trail to, that matches his story? Why don't we try to look at his code to see if he's that advanced of a programmer? 
no one cares because they think it's just natural to uh, attempt to assassinate someone because they've decided that the Constitution doesn't matter because the cops know that there's no ruling from the Supreme Court on certain issues yet. Like, can you threaten someone back? No, no, you can't threaten someone back after someone threatens you. Like, if someone tries to start a fight with you, you can't tell them, hey, I have a concealed weapon, just so you know, like, I will kill you. You can't say that after someone tries to start a fight with you. You can't dissolve a fight like that. You have to let them attack you and then shoot them. That's what the Supreme Court thinks because, well, actually, the Supreme Court hasn't decided on it. The cops have decided on it. And so everyone gets their gun taken away because these dudes want to murder us because they don't like that you're in a biker gang. I mean, I'm just saying, like, that, that's, that's the reality. So um, I'm not in a biker gang. They don't like me because what? Because they're, they're religious nuts, probably. No, no, we picked an atheist. Okay. All I'm saying is um, if, you're, if everyone's lying to the police and you're part of the police, isn't that kind of lying to the police? Like if James is lying to you and you're arresting me and he's not telling you shit and all he tells you is like nothing. Oh, yeah, I forgot to leave out like the whole he didn't want to sell drugs at all because he was like, I'd rather be a homeless person. I'm writing a book. I'm going to be a famous writer. Because uh, who, who's the eternal optimist? Me. Who will always make art? Me. Who is always going to like make incredible amounts of money off art? Me. But like, it's just like, I mean, maybe it's not like SBM. Like, that's a thing. Like, when you see a story that's, that this guy's raping a nine-year-old, you're like, wow, that's a nine-year-old lying. And then you think, well, the nine-year-old doesn't have to talk. It's the mom that talks. The nine-year-old has to just say, yeah, he did. And then it's over. But um, I don't know. All I know is that I, I do have love for the Latin kings. And um, like when I say people are cartel, it's kind of like you're Mexican. Like, like it's hard to explain like how I'm cartel and I'm, I, I, I know that's like the most offensive thing ever, but like they're my friends and they're like normal people. And I understand like, just like I'm not responsible for a person mur murdering 11 year old because the 11 year old snitched because the cops put pressure on this freaking little kid. Um, I don't think that the cartel is responsible or at least certain cartel people are responsible for everything. Why? Because like none of us even talk like, I, I mean, I feel like that, that organization, like, it's hard to explain. Like, if there's anybody who's a white person that's an extension of the cartel, it's me because I'm from Texas and, like, I, I'm on the border. Like, they just drive up and we're chilling and we're having a great time having drinks and then this guy just wants to fight. And, like, my brother's, like, passed out and I'm sitting there going, dude, you need to wake up because I need my brother to be able to fight because there, there are two of them. One of them's huge. And then my brother's like, well, I would have just bashed him in the head with a beer bottle. And I'm like, well, this guy, like, just, just tried to get me to fight him. Like, and he's like, yeah, but you didn't fight him. And it's like, well, like, are you guys trying to get people to draw guns? Of course you are. And that's the thing. It's like, I am constantly the one that's like trying not to kill people, but then I'm also having to constantly be ready for it. And it's like, why are you putting more pressure on me than there needs to be? It's bad enough.